when the whole thing started with you, uh, at what age? And well, I was 29 years old, and I had um, I had just come back from being in the Peace Corps in, uh, in Peru, and, um, and I, it was 1968, and things were pretty crazy in this country. The Vietnam War, people being shot, Martin Luther King being one of them, Medgar Evers, another, many, many, many that I don't even know, untold bigotry, craziness, racism, and you know, it was just not, and the Vietnam War. And being, um, being that time, and coming back into this country with rootless in a way, I had a nervous breakdown. And when I had the nervous breakdown, I decided that we would, uh, my wife and I, would open up a, um, a store would open up a, a, a gallery to sell folk art that we had collected because we were three years in Peru working with the Peace Corps. <coughs> and at that time, we had uh, two salaries and, and that we could use for living, and, uh, and we only needed one. So with the other, we bought, we bought what we would call folk art, but it was you know all kinds of crafts. And we were working with craftspeople too, so we were buying what they were making. We had cases and cases of objects. So we opened the store with that. And the store was in this derelict neighborhood. This neighborhood was a mess. But we were right next to a thriving theater of the living arts, which was um, a repertory theater that had planned to move when there was going to be a knocking down of all the buildings on the street. So we moved there to get the theater people to come to our store. And I began embellishing the store, working with it, you know, making all kinds of uh, modifications, which could be called art. And that art turned into all that I do. But it was in the incipient stages, the beginning of it. And now it's, it's, it's 40 years later. Mm -hmm. you know, well, not 40, yeah, 44 years later because he was born around that time, 44 years later. So he, he watched the changes as a little kid, seeing all of the changes that were going on. But then it was one building that I filled, and then I needed another building, and another building. In the interim, I became a landlord. Mm -hmm. So that allowed me the money to continue making art, until this time when now this is a museum. Uh -huh. But usually, uh, your art, you know, needs a, a very big space to do. And yes. I don't know if you have already the image in your mind. No, you no just image. start from one place and you just move. That's right. Uh huh. I see. That's right. So you don't throw what you're going to. Uh, no, it's make. not. A, it's not something that's conceptualized beforehand. I, I mean, I know the feeling that I'm searching for in myself. I know to be completely surrounded by a space that has no bottom, has no top, uh -huh. has no sides. It's like a, um, a vortex, uh -huh. like spinning in, in, a, in an endless big space. But being able to land, like a little bee being able to land in a flower garden. But then off I am again to land in another flower, another flower, another flower. You've seen Philadelphia change a lot over the years. Sure. What do you think the future has in store for? Well, all of these cities are becoming uh, filled with young people. And these young people have completely new visions. I mean, the internet, their, you know, their, uh, their communication level with each other, with the world, is, is uh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and they're all doing it. They're all communicating with each other. And uh, who knows where it will lead? I mean, it's 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 wonderful where it's leading. And then they're painting themselves too. <laughs> <laughs> they're what? They're walking canvas. <laughs> I, I saw a woman. I said, I said, oh, you have a lot of diatoms on you. She said, no, I'm up closer. And that was uh, dancing uh, fruit and vegetables. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so, wow. I said, that's isn't that wonderful. Now, what was she doing? And where did I see her? In yoga. Really? We were both doing yoga <laughs> in a class. And, uh, and so there was this uh, camaraderie, because we were both doing the same thing, mm -hmm. that I could ask her about her tattoos. But I think, uh, what does she do? 
she has a blog. Wow. She's a, she's a, a, a teacher uh, on a blog. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. That was great. Yeah, so all these, uh, I mean, where it's going. And people are generating towards uh, centers of culture. Young people are generating towards centers of culture. Well, they leave when they have children, but that's not happening so much anymore because they're changing the school system. Mm -hmm. They're changing the schools. They're demanding more from the schools. And not only demanding more, they're volunteering to be there. You know? So it's all, that's all changing. Mm -hmm. So once the schools all change, then everything, I mean, everything keeps changing and yeah. changing and changing. And, um, well, with a guy like Obama, the underclass is, uh, is feeling like they have somebody there mm -hmm. that's at least trying for them. The middle class mm -hmm. trying for them. Maybe, uh, maybe things will get better. Mm -hmm. And better, and better, and better. But then there's a whole world out there. I mean, you can look at the back of the New York Times and see beautiful lesbian couples getting married, gay couples getting married. But then you know that in places like Nigeria, you know, that uh, the gay and lesbian couples are being so murdered. You know? and, that, uh, and, and that in Mali, there's, there's the craziness of the, uh, the fundamentalist Islamics trying to pull together their, uh, their Sharia law and just reading it verbatim and doing it, it's frightening. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole world out there. It's filled with weapons too. And we are. And so this one here too, too. Yeah. yeah. So it's all, um, I mean, it's, it's always hanging in the balance, maybe, always. Mm 